We've got a Fox News alert for you right now. Brand new information on this video, a YouTube posted yesterday showing ISIS terrorists brutally beheading an American journalist. Fox's Catherine Herridge confirming moments ago that U.S. officials are making the executioner's name and location a top priority. This has to be a bigger strategy than that. This can't be about the dam. It can't be about one single stream of threat, which you just saw from uh, ISIL. They have been threatening for months, and matter of fact, over uh, almost a year, uh, ever since they've been on the march, raping and pillaging and beheading both Christians and Yazidis and minority groups, anyone that won't submit to their rule, they use violence right. uh, to put into submission. That's who they are. So America got a glimpse of exactly who they are. This is not a group you're going to have a sit down with and negotiate. This is a group you need to deal with. They are terrorists who have expressed for over a year an interest in attacking the United States and our uh, European allies. That ought to get us off our backsides and get to work on dismantling this organization. It's dangerous. You know, you said a while back, and a lot of people kind of hemmed and hawed at what you said, you, you predicted that America will likely get hit in the next 10 years in a way that was worse than 9-11. Remember the 9-11 Commission report conclusion. They are at war with us. We weren't at war with them. Uh, after watching this video, I'm pretty convinced that we have a group of people at war with us. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, Sean. There's no question but what the developments in Iraq and Syria, the development of a caliphate uh, with the ISIS organization in charge is... Uh, very much a threat to the United States, uh, to our friends and allies, not only in the Middle East, but in Europe. And uh, when you see them behead uh, an American reporter as they did today, that's obviously a terrible development, but magnify that a million times over because that's what's in store for the rest of the world. There seems to be two issues that, that are the foundation for the situation now. One was when the president drew the red line in the sand with Syria and did nothing after they used chemical weapons and also the president pulling out training and intelligence for the Iraqi forces. My question to you is, did ISIS gain control of these areas of Syria, now surrounding Baghdad? Is this all a result of the president's bad policy, the naivete that you discuss? Well, I, th I think that's part of it. Uh, I think uh, he has managed uh, in so many different ways to be ineffective when he responds, to draw the red line in the sand and then never respond to it, uh, to make uh, threats and, and uh, never act. Uh, it's reached the point where I think uh, around the world people, other leaders, see him as, as weak and ineffective. We got a rush right here, pointing at someone to get on the ground. They singled him out. Stay there, Dutch. And they circled him. He's on the ground now, rifles pointed in a circle around everybody. And again, community officers 
are trying to keep people back. Now All right, the tear gas is out. There were a couple of pops that came. That's a big flashbang. What? A lot of flashbangs, a lot of smoke. <laughs> the, sweat, <coughs> the smoke does have some tear, <coughs> tear gas in it. Woo! That's in my a mask, Mike. <coughs> um, what we're making available today are the dispatch records and the video footage of a robbery, a strong arm robbery, uh, with use of force that occurred at a local convenience mart. I cannot discuss the uh, inves investigation about the attempted apprehension of the suspect in that strong arm robbery that, that goes to this county prosecutor's office. from that Dyer County High School student who told us that she was kicked out of class for saying bless you. Kendra Turner says she was suspended for responding to a classmate's sneeze. That student posted on Facebook yesterday that her teacher told her, quote, now we will not have godly speaking in my class. But school leaders say she was given in-school suspension for violating that teacher's no talking policy and causing a disruption in the classroom. She said, who told you it was courtesy? I told her that my pastor and my parents taught me that it was courtesy to say it. She said that this is not your pastor's classroom. I get to the office and one of the administrators said that if I didn't want to follow my teacher's rules, then maybe I should just get my pastor to teach me. 